Right now on Sunrise, week two in the Derek Chauvin trial begins this morning. What to expect as prosecutors get ready to question Minneapolis Police Chief Madaria Arredondo. We're hearing warnings about a possible fourth wave of the coronavirus, and it's being tracked back to classrooms here in the Midwest. After a warm day yesterday, warmer temperatures are on the way today. Showers and storms return to the forecast. And the wild are back home, and so are the fans. We're getting an up-close look at the cutting-edge cleaning technology being used to keep fans safe. It's Monday, April 5th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Good morning. What a week for Minnesota sports fans. Starting today, the Wild and Timberwolves are welcoming you back to watch live and in person. After a year away, many are itching to get back to watching in the stands. Sunrisers, how are you feeling about all of this and going to a game? Let us know using the hashtag Sunrisers. I want to go to a game right now. Socially distanced. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah, see some action. Yeah. Hey, we're going to get to Alicia. She is tracking something going on right behind her. But first, let's get to Guy with the weather. Yeah, and a great day. I'm tracking some sunshine. Highs today in the 80s. And then some late day evening showers and thunderstorms. But, and you know, we have lots of dry time today. In fact, most of the day looks dry. 50 right now with a northeast wind at just 6 miles per hour. Already above 70 for lunchtime. And then by 4 p.m., 80 there with winds picking up from the south at 16 miles per hour. So record warmth possible today. Evening storms, some strong. I'll be touching all on this coming up a little bit later in the show. Yeah, and we showed you guys earlier this morning that little tiny bit of smoke along the stretch of 35W northbound up uh, uh, past the Mounds View area. It turned into a large grass fire in a matter of seconds. Crews, though, on the scene looks like they put it completely out, but it is dry out there. So, of course, watch for that. No other crashes, no other issues here around the metro. Well, week two of the Derek Chauvin murder trial gets underway in just a few hours. So far, the trial has been driven by emotional testimony and tearful witnesses. Today, though, we expect those tears to be replaced by technical details in George Floyd's death. Joining us now is Jennifer Austin. The prosecution will now start leaning on expert witnesses to prove this case. Jennifer? Yeah, and a big question this week, when will Minneapolis Police Chief Medaria Arredondo testify? We don't know the answer to that question yet because we don't know the order for witnesses. But we spoke with former Hennepin County Chief Public Defender Mary Moriarty, who said because the chief was expected to, te to testify on Friday, we could hear from him today. MPD told us they don't have a date or a time, but that it's happening in the near future. Moriarty also says Dr. Andrew Baker, the Hennepin County Chief Medical Examiner, is a key witness as George Floyd's cause of death continues to be a focus in the, in the trial. It's unclear when he'll testify. I imagine the state will take a great deal of time breaking down everything he did, when he did it, and, and, and get him to explain to the jury exactly what he meant. Friday's proceedings ended early because Judge Cahill said that the trial is slightly ahead of schedule. It is expected to last four weeks. All right, Jennifer, thank you. And the powerful testimony in the trial so far has given us better insight into what led up to George Floyd's death. But Minnesota law requires it be viewed through the lens of a reasonable officer in Derek Chauvin's shoes without the benefit of 2020 hindsight. Most of the witnesses did not see officers struggle to get George Floyd in the squad car. And Minnesota law on use of force references a reasonable officer using reasonable force. Ultimately, the jury will decide what is reasonable. And now they've heard directly from Chauvin, from body cam footage that is defending his actions after an ambulance took Floyd away. He's going to control this guy because he's a sizable guy. Yeah, and I thought, and I thought looks he like, didn't get in the car. Looks like he's to... probably on something. It will likely come down to who the jury identifies with most, Derek Chauvin or the citizens who begged officers to save Floyd's life. Care 11 is bringing you inside the courtroom every day for the trial. Our daily gavel to gavel live coverage, including lots of Witness testimony you'll see on TV and, of course, expert analysis. So make sure to stay tuned to the trial right here on CARE 11. Comprehensive reporting from Lou Raguse and a team of legal experts starts every morning around 9. You can also tune in to all our digital platforms. 
Now in our Sunrise Live, with more people getting vaccinated and more relaxed travel guidelines in place, millions of Americans packed their bags and passed through security at airports over the weekend to visit their friends and family for the Easter holiday. But experts just say there's still a reason to be concerned about spreading COVID-19, especially when it comes to kids now. A TSA spokesperson tweeted Sunday that nearly 1.4 million people passed through TSA checkpoints on April 3rd, compared to just 118,000 people screened on that same day last year. It's about an 800% increase in travel from 2020. And just last week, the CDC updated their guidance to say fully vaccinated people can travel within the U.S. without getting tested for COVID or going into quarantine afterwards after cautioning against unnecessary travel for much of the pandemic. Well, it's good news for people ready to get back to normal, but infectious disease expert Dr. Michael Osterholm says it's not time to let our guard down. On Meet the Press on Sunday, Osterholm expressed concerns about new COVID variants. Before November, we really didn't understand that this virus would mutate as it does and that in terms of its mutations, it can do one of three things. One, it can be much more infectious. Two, it can cause more severe illnesses. Or three, in some instances, it can actually evade the immune protection from the vaccine or from having previously been infected. Now, the B117 strain or UK variant is likely to blame for a recent spike in cases in the Northeast and Upper Midwest. And according to Osterholm, he says it's readily in young kids now. State health officials say the UK variant is now the dominant strain in our state. But Pfizer has reported its vaccine has a 100% efficacy in kids between the age of 12 and 15. And drug makers hope to have a vaccine for that age group ready for the start of the upcoming school year. So yeah, a lot of people still, you know, you guys waiting in line to get their vaccine shots. I've noticed though, I woke up, I wake up early all the time, even on weekends. Uh, typically you can get them if you wake up a little bit early. Yeah, that's definitely you have to be up around 3.30, I find, because they fill up pretty quick yeah. um, after that. Thanks for sharing, Alicia. Now time for your morning rush. A man accused of killing a woman and her two children in St. Paul is headed to court today. 26-year-old Takeith Jones is facing three counts of first-degree murder. Police say Jones admitted to shooting his ex-girlfriend, Isandria Wallace, her 14-year-old daughter, and 11-year-old son back in February. According to police reports, Jones told police he did it to, quote, save them. The CDC is issuing new guidelines to help get cruise ships to set sail once again. The ships would have to report COVID cases daily and test crew members regularly. The CDC shut down the cruise industry a year ago and has not said when it will lift the restrictions. Cruise lines hope to be up and running again in the U.S. by July. Metro Transit welcoming more people back on its buses and trains. Starting today, it will allow 20 passengers on 40-foot buses, 30 passengers on 60-foot buses, and up to 33 passengers on each car on the light rail. They say the move is based on guidance from MDH. The Twins are kicking off their second series of the season in Detroit today. It comes after a big win in Milwaukee yesterday, eight to two. They're now two and one on the season. First pitch is at noon, and that is your Monday morning rush. Guy, what's the one thing weather? Yeah, nice and warm today. Temperatures will be in the upper 70s and 80s with sunshine, and then storms develop late day. And good news, that grass fire out of the Lionel Lakes area cleared, as you can see here on the stretch of 35W northbound. Uh, we'll be talking about some construction projects around the metro coming up. After more than a year of watching from home, Minnesota Wild fans are returning to the X tonight. That's right. The team is welcoming back 3,000 fans as the state loosens its COVID restrictions on gatherings and venues. Kaya Edwards is live at the XL Energy Center. And Kaya, what can fans expect tonight? Hey, good morning. Well, gosh, first of all, can we talk about Kelly? I'm a little excited. Are you excited? I'm very excited okay. to be here this morning. Yeah, this is Kelly uh, from Excel Energy Center. I mean, for tonight, though, fans coming back. I'm excited about that. So um, you're going to walk us through kind of the safety measures so nobody's freaking out. Yeah. Right? <laughs> what do we need to know? You've got some visuals here. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> we have been preparing and preparing. Our operations crew is always at the top of their game, but they certainly have stepped it up a notch as we get ready to welcome up to 3,000 fans back tonight for uh, the wild game. Yeah. And uh, like we were talking about, our building has always been clean, right. sanitized, disinfected, uh -huh. but we really want fans to know we take safety as our number one priority. And we've been working uh, with a local Minnesota company called Micro Armor to apply a product called Micro Care. They use these electric static sprayers <laughs> that you've probably seen Ooh. on your different stories where the 
The product comes out in a, a spray form on all of our hard surfaces, so people won't see it, but we want people to know it's there. It um, creates like a, a convalescent bond uh -huh. on surfaces, including people's seats and the countertops, the concession stands where they're gonna get their food so that when viruses land on this bonded surface, uh, they're killed. It's 99.9% .9 effective, so it's wonderful. Okay. And then our partners, Ecolab, we have over 500 of our uh, hand sanitizing stations throughout the arena. A lot of their great products are used just to keep the building uh, clean, uh, disinfected when uh, we have fans down tonight. Our building always looks good, but it really, really looks it's good sparkling, tonight. It's sparkling, you guys. It's <laughs> sparkling. And I love that these are Minnesota companies. Yeah. So yeah, um, let's talk about social distancing. I mean, how is that going to work inside? Yeah, so we are following the guidelines from the Minnesota Department of Health and, yes. and Governor Walls. Uh, we've had our executives have been meeting with the other teams around um, the the city for well over a year yep. just to make sure we're all on the same page with what's going to be expected when fans are finally able to come back so tonight. So nobody's yelling at you, exactly. right? Exactly. Like everybody's on board <laughs> to nice follow to these it. safety yeah. precautions, you guys. Uh, coming up, Kelly, thank you. Next hour, we're going to talk about some fun experiences for fans here at the XL. So we'll see you then. Back to you. Oh, it's exciting. Fans getting back in the yeah. building. Good quality stuff. Show and tell. Well, all good. right, Kai. Thanks. Well, Sorry. doctor says her smart ring let her know she was sick before she was diagnosed with COVID. And she says your wearable can do the same. Then a riot inside a jail ends up on the streets of downtown St. Louis. And it was all caught on video.